Lightweight, low water hook, size is a, in this case it's a size 6. Now, the thread I'm going to be using, this is a Danvos thread in Chartreuse 6 -0. Let's just put it through the bobbin first. Now, it's a nice and bright colour, you can use whatever colour you like, but this is to enhance the colour of the, the actual fly that I'm tying. Now, I'm going to start the thread at the eye. And we'll run it down halfway, let's take it all the way down to this point here, and then remove the base piece, and then come back up. Now I'm going to stop the thread just at the area where when you form these, these the eyes formed in these hooks, they bend the wire around, and you can see where it's where it actually touches the shank. That's where I'm tying in, in this case, a piece of nylon and a glass bead. This is the the material I'm going to tie on to, to form, help form the parachute hackle. Now, this is a heavy, heavy nylon. As far as it's 30 pounds, 30, 40 pound nylon. You can use whatever colour of bead or whatever colour of nylon you can find. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to basically melt it. And let it build up. A ball of plastic. Use the back of my nail and flatten it and then bring the bead up against it. Now just be careful because melting plastic is very really hot. The uh, back of your nail is not so bad. If you want to moisten the back of your nail then do it. You should, shouldn't feel it anything at all. Or if you don't want to do that just touch it onto your desk and you'll find it will melt just the same. Now what I'm going to do is tie this on. I want it at least to Two to three mil off the shank of the hook, two to three millimeters, enough to form or to hold down the parachute hackle. Then I'm going to come in and we tie down the nylon along the shank. Make sure it's well tied down. Then we cut it at a slight angle so that the thread tapers off. Nice and tight, and then bring the thread back up. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to post or lift, but basically it turns a thread in front of the nylon to post it or lift the, the nylon up. There we are. Now the, the hackle I'm going to be using, this is a Mets Grade 2 saddle and badger, silver badger. Looking for a good length in the hackle. Right, one here, I'll show you the length that it's going to be. If I open that out, if I put the centre of the stem, and you'll see that it covers the full length of the shank. And when you tie that on, the spread of the hackle will help keep the fly up. And then what I'm going to do is remove some of the, the fibres, tie it, and post it up the actual nylon itself. But you must post up the the hackle when you put it onto this or a post in it, it should put no fibers on it you don't want any fibers on it because it's much easier to see and there's less chance of fibers going all over the place and bring the thread back down it's very easy to do it bring the thread to the back and then just in this case I'm just going to carry on all the way down make sure your hackle's out of the way. by the area you've tied in everything else and I'm just going to break off the hackle. Now I'm going to start the hackle or the body just slightly by the point. Just You could either be on the point of the hook or just slightly by it. And that's the area I want to start. The reason I'm slightly by the point is just by the time I've tied this in it will balance itself out. Now I've got some 2 mil thick chartreuse ether foam which is for the body. Now the reason I'm using this is to help keep the fly up. Now, I've cut a 4mm width, tapered it just at the end, I tie it so the straight ends on the top, like that, and the cut ends onto the, the bend of the hook. 
tie it down. Just take the thread quickly up and then back down, just making sure everything's neatly tied in. Then bring your thread all the way up. Stop it around about two mil from the actual the post of the wing. Now plenty of super glue you need to here. Just onto the shank of the hook, because this is what holds the foam onto the, the hook and obviously makes it last much longer. And there we are. And then winding it up with a tapered cut at the back. Just slightly stretch it as you go. Just watch what you're doing here. Now it's taking a small reservoir of the super glue with it as you go. You can see it there just as it comes round. This will make your fly last much longer. And then you get to that area where you're two mil from the stem. Just come across and tie it down. Nice and tight. And then take away your excess. So you'll get another fly out of that piece. And then tidy up. And we'll very quick look at our body, see how it looks. Now that looks fine. Now we're ready to tie in our wing. Now the winging material, you can use lots of hair, types of hair, it's up to yourself. Bucktail, could be squirrel, could be whatever you like. Now I'm going to use, this in this case, this is some badger, European badger it's called. And it's got a nice mark, it's got a nice black white tip, it's a black bar. And all I'm doing is bringing it out from the, the, the actual skin. And you can see how the hair starting to line up. And once I've got enough, I hold the ends and cut it really right close to the skin. And you see there's a big mess of under fur. Now take this off. Now I'm going to use this. I'm going to blend that with some what they call diamond bright light. It's actually diamond bright is by a, a lovely dubbing, synthetic dubbing. It's ideal for blending into hair. Now ready for our wing. Now being a stone fly, obviously you want a nice low, reasonably low wing, and at least by the bend of the hook. So what I'm going to do is tie this on at the back. Just hold it down, nice and tight, and a few turns at this point. And then, what I'm going to do is come to the front, taking the cut, well, basically what I'm trying to do here by taking it to the front here, is keeping everything nice and balanced. Just tidy up. Now, once I'm happy but I've caught in most of the hair I want, take away the excess, make sure you wax your thread, Come down and then come back up, ready for your dubbing. And there we are. Now, this is where under fur now. There we are, there's where under fur here. And then I'm going to get some, this is the Diamond Bright. The Diamond Bright fluorescent chartreuse. I'm just going to take some of this and then blend the under fur and the diamond bright, just using my fingers, just mixing it up. Just take your time. Mix is very easy. Just keep pulling it apart and pulling it together. Just constantly mix. Just don't break the fibre. Just lightly pull it through your fingers, and this will blend it perfectly. There we are. See, got a nice dubbing. And now I'm going to put some at the back first. Dub it onto your thread. Just hold your wing. Just slightly bring the dubbing onto it slightly, and you'll see how it holds it a wee bit better once you do that. Then bring your thread to the front. Now you've got your dubbing at the back. Now I'm going to form a parachute hackle. Now I'm going to wind it so that one turns next under. You do a turn, then your next turn should be underneath that. But what I'm just doing is building up this hackle. Now you can hold the wing out of the way and just because these hackles are long, you can actually hold them right in the tip under strong. Bind it round as many turns you can get. I usually take it, take this out of the way, and I press my thumb against the point of the hackle and bring the thread up. And hold it nice and tight. Something you've got to practice. 
and then you can take away the excess. Now you could bring the thread through the hackle, just basically that way. I find it, I don't like doing it, to be honest with you. I prefer just to catch in at the bottom like I would do a normal hackle. And then get some more dubbing. Getting onto your thread. Lift your hackle up and out the way. Just watch, don't catch any hackle. Now, at this point, I'm going to check things, see how this ovens, if it's nice and tidy. I mean, I like things to be neat, so a tiny wee bit of dubbing just to slightly taper it off. this fiber away and then we need wet finish tighten up so we've too tight and then what I'm going to do is come in you touch your super glue all the way around Now once that's dry, then I'll put some varnish on it. And there we are. I'll just lift this hackle down so you can see the position of it. But you can see what I mean by when you wind the hackle, it actually lowers the wing for you, sits it nice, nice and low. And uh, so I hope you anyway, I hope you like that. It's, a, it's a, an unusual pattern to tie. Certainly fun. And that there's Lee Wolf's surface stone fly.